Like any star, it will run out of fuel in its core and it starts changing, it starts bloating, and getting so large that it will engulf the orbit of Mercury and Venus and come very close to Earth. So imagine looking on the horizon and sunrise is half the sky. It's difficult to overlook the constellation Orion the Hunter when stargazing on a clear winter's night. He holds a shield in one arm and extends the other arm far into the sky. Betelgeuse, a brilliant red dot that identifies Orion's shoulder, has fascinated sky watchers for millennia due to its peculiar fading. It's possible that Australian Aboriginal people included it in their oral history. Astronomers now understand that Betelgeuse is a fading red supergiant star with a diameter that is around 700 times greater than our Sun, which explains why its brightness varies. Because of Betelgeuse's latest shenanigans, which started in 2019, some people have speculated that the time for its dramatic demise may be approaching. If Betelgeuse exploded, it would be the closest supernova explosion in almost 400 years, and so bright that it might be seen during the day. Much of what we know about the cosmos is being upended by the cataclysmic explosion of this super red giant. Is it possible that Betelgeuse has run its course? Will there ever be a supernova explosion that can be seen from Earth? Let's find out. Perhaps the first thing that comes to mind when you say the name Betelgeuse is the ghostly con artist from the 1988 film of the same name. However, if you hear the term Betelgeuse used among a group of scientists, they are probably referring to the star of the same name, which is one of the brightest in our sky. Some people find it interesting because they think it could be the end of humanity and the planet. Betelgeuse, a magnificent ruby-red sparkling star, can be found in the upper right shoulder of Orion the Hunter throughout the winter. Careful observation, however, reveals it to be a roiling monster with a 400 day-long heartbeat of regular pulsations. Betelgeuse stands out due to its striking orange-red hue. It's perfect for persuading skeptics that the stars really are multicolored. The stars in this group are all in their final stages of life. Because of their massive size, these stars are the most numerous and widespread in the cosmos. It is the second brightest star in Orion after the blue supergiant Rigel and goes by the name Alpha Orionis. Betelgeuse, with its peculiar name and fluctuating character, is an unusual and interesting target for astronomical research and observation. Betelgeuse's distance from Earth is unknown with certainty, however, estimates range from 430 to 724 light years. Betelgeuse is the closest red supergiant star to Earth and the brightest. Compared to Betelgeuse, the Sun's radius is around 764 times bigger. The light from this star, if it were to replace the Sun in our solar system, would penetrate far beyond Jupiter and the asteroids. This would mean that the planets Earth, Mars, Venus, Mercury, and Venus would be totally engulfed. Every 10,000 years, Betelgeuse loses the equivalent of one solar mass. This material is being expelled from the red star in all directions at once, leading to the formation of the nebula around the star. Betelgeuse is surrounded by a cloud of material that is 250 times larger than the star itself. This nebula is estimated to be 30 astronomical units across, or 30 times the distance between the Sun and Earth. The star is likely in its latter stages of helium fusion, which lasts for tens to hundreds of thousands of years before culminating in a supernova explosion, according to astronomers. Betelgeuse is a variable star that goes through cycles of increased brightness and decreased brightness at regular intervals. Astronomers have seen Betelgeuse shine every 400 days, dim to about half its peak brightness, and then brighten again for more than a century. However, in December 2019, the star suddenly faded to a level 2.5 times fainter than its usual dimmest shine, shocking astronomers. The star faded by 60% in a matter of months, an occurrence now known as the Great Dimming. Some scientists speculated that Betelgeuse had entered a pre-supernova phase, which would rule out the explosive death of a big star in a supernova. The Hubble Space Telescope revealed that Betelgeuse has temporarily blocked light from the universe due to the ejection of surface debris into space. While the Sun also produces eruptions, Betelgeuse's were 400 billion times more massive than the Sun's coronal mass ejections. Its space debris probably had a mass greater than the Moon. While Betelgeuse has returned to its normal brilliance, the star is still not quite the same as it was before the Great Dimming. 
The star's 400-day brightness oscillation cycle has been cut in half to 200 days, and it also appears to be undergoing the additional brightening that thrills sky watchers. However, astronomers are trying to dampen supernova excitement. According to Morgan McLeod, a postdoctoral scholar in theoretical astrophysics at Harvard University and lead author of a recent paper about Betelgeuse's great dimming, our best models show that Betelgeuse is in the stage where it is burning helium to carbon and oxygen in its core. If the models are true, it will not explode for another tens of thousands or even a hundred thousand years. McLeod said that while a star's normal lifespan concludes when it exhausts its supply of hydrogen and begins to fuse helium in its core, the red giant phase of its evolution extends that lifespan beyond the helium burning stage. Without helium, the star will need to convert carbon and oxygen into neon and magnesium, and finally silicon, in order to survive. Over time, iron accumulates at the star's core. And now the fun really starts. The addition of helium nuclei to an iron atom takes energy away from the atom rather than adding it. So, instead of a reaction that releases vast amounts of energy, the star's core abruptly begins to absorb it. As a result of this transformation, the star's core collapses inward, producing a kind of supernova known as a core collapse supernova. While stars can live for billions of years during their hydrogen burning phase, their lifespans progressively decrease during the rest of their lives. The helium burning period can last for hundreds of thousands of years. The following stage lasts for a very long time, perhaps 10,000 years. The stage after that lasts for thousands of years. The stage after that lasts for a century. And the stage right before the explosion lasts for only a few days or hours. The massive star Betelgeuse would reach as far as Jupiter if placed at the center of our solar system. Astronomers are able to learn more about Betelgeuse than they would about other stars because of its size and its location in our galaxy, the Milky Way. Most stars besides the Sun can't be researched in any depth. They appear to us simply as isolated bright points. But the Hubble Space Telescope and radio telescopes can resolve Betelgeuse because it is sufficiently large. Those pictures show a fascinating body that is very different from our Sun. Betelgeuse is not a uniform sphere of superheated plasma, but rather a collection of boiling gas bubbles, the largest of which are the size of tiny stars. Massive plumes of hot material ascend from the interior of Betelgeuse to the surface, cool and eventually disappear. It's like the solar cycle, but with a lot of added muscle. Betelgeuse burps up a bubble so enormous that the great dimming occurs once every several decades. However, this information does not indicate that the star will soon explode. If the astronomers' assumptions are correct, that is. Would we be aware if Betelgeuse was poised to go supernova? Astronomers are able to determine the chemical makeup of Betelgeuse's atmosphere because our most advanced telescopes provide such detailed images of the star's outer layers but they can't possibly know what's happening deep inside the star. Is helium actually being used as fuel? Maybe it's already switched to carbon fusion. And if it did, how would we ever find out? The observations of other red giant stars have led us to the conclusions that we employ to describe Betelgeuse. In the Milky Way, Betelgeuse is widely considered to be significantly further away from its death than BYCMA, a red giant 3,900 light years away in the constellation Canis. However, in contrast to Betelgeuse, which has been steadily brightening over the past century, this star has been steadily fading. 100 years ago, sky watchers could see VYCMA with their unaided eyes. However, it has emitted so much matter that we can only observe it in the infrared spectrum at this point. We anticipate this outflow as the star approaches its supernova explosion. Betelgeuse still has 95% of its former bulk, while VYCMA has lost almost 60%. Until about 2,000 years ago, poets referred to Betelgeuse as a yellow star, but now it's commonly described as red. That could mean that Betelgeuse is still in its infancy as a red giant. What will it look like from Earth when Betelgeuse goes supernova? Observations of Supernova 1987A, the nearest known star to explode in centuries, help them improve their accuracy, but they still can't be sure how the explosion will unfold. Nothing will hurt Earth's living creatures. However, that won't prevent it from receiving attention. After Betelgeuse goes boom, the sky will be illuminated for over three months by a star as bright as the half moon, which is nine times dimmer than the full moon. The focus of all that illumination would be a single point. 
So it would be this tremendously bright star in the sky, visible throughout the day and capable of casting shadows at night. Because of its universality, it would pique the interest of people everywhere. For about two months, the supernova will shine so brightly that a person could read a book in its light if the city's lights were turned off and there were no clouds in the sky. The supernova would be visible during the day for around a year to humans. Even after the supernova's remnants fade, it would be visible to the human eye at night for years. Over the next few months, the supernova will slowly go out. When it finally disappears, the left shoulder of Orion will be gone. After tens of years, the dead star's blown apart outer shell will have drifted far enough away to appear as a planetary nebula or a ring surrounding the residual faint core of the dead star. By that time, the star is expected to have transformed into either a neutron star or a black hole. How much of the star survives after a supernova explosion will determine its ultimate fate. The stellar explosion is nothing to be concerned about. Some estimates put the minimum distance as a few dozen light years between Earth and the supernova that caused it. Recent research puts Betelgeuse at about 724 light years distant, which puts it well beyond the danger zone. However, the explosion may still have unexpected effects on our planet. Many species rely on the moon for orientation and become disoriented when confronted with man-made light sources. A second moon-like object might cause interference. Even astronomers would have a hard time observing the night sky without disturbing the local creatures. When the moon is brilliant, it is already difficult to make astronomical observations. For a while, there would be no nighttime. The study of Betelgeuse, presents its own special difficulties. The brightness of the light would make their equipment useless. Astronomers assure us that we will have plenty of notice if Betelgeuse does, against all chances, explode during our lifetimes. Neutrinos or gravitational waves emitted by the explosion could be detected by instruments on Earth as early as a day beforehand. There could be a lot of factors influencing Betelgeuse's brightness. Some astronomers have even hypothesized that there are actually many dimming mechanisms at work. Near the conclusion of their lives, red supergiant stars begin to swell and form expanding envelopes of gas and dust as their nuclear fuel runs out. The expansion of this envelope correlates with an increase in the star's luminosity. A star like Betelgeuse, though, can also fade and shine in other ways. Red supergiant stars, like our own Sun, have massive convective cells on their surfaces where internal turbulence drives hot material to the surface. Part of this material, once it reaches the surface, explodes forcefully into space like a gigantic radioactive belch, temporarily altering the brightness of the object. The dimming of Betelgeuse may indicate an impending explosion. A dying star's surface material often collides as it explodes, increasing the star's luminosity. But it's also possible that this stuff is obscuring the star and making it appear less bright. Whatever the source, the unusual behavior should shed light on the final moments of red supergiant stars. And all of humanity will be there to witness it. Astronomers have a fantastic opportunity to observe Betelgeuse's final stages of nuclear burning before it explodes. The Kepler supernova, or SN1604, was the most recent supernova explosion discovered in our galaxy. Named after the astronomer who first wrote about it, Johannes Kepler, in his book De Stella Nova, Historical records indicate that the supernova was visible throughout the day for more than three weeks, despite being 30 times further from Earth than Betelgeuse. Supernova 1987A occurred only a few decades ago and could be seen with the naked eye for a brief period of time. However, several of these guest stars were also seen by ancient astronomers. Chinese astronomers saw a mysterious guest star appearing in the sky about the year 185. AD, its duration of visibility was extraordinary at eight months. That was long enough for the first ever recorded sighting of a supernova to be made by ancient sky watchers. Some evidence suggests that Roman astronomers were present as well. Astronomers have only recently uncovered this dead star's remnants. Their research shows that supernova RCW 86 occurred when a companion star dumped a lot of its mass onto a white dwarf, which is effectively a dead star. This caused an explosion some 8,000 light years from Earth, which scientists classify as a Type 1a supernova. The G-347, 3-0.5 supernova of 393 AD, was a brilliant star that could be seen for months across the night sky. 
It would have shone as brightly as Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, according to astronomers' estimates. It would be difficult to argue against the year 1006 AD as the greatest moment in human history to stargaze if amateur astronomers had access to a time machine. A startlingly brilliant guest star in the constellation Lupus burst into Earth's skies. According to NASA, Sen 1006 would have shown with a brightness roughly 16 times that of Venus, the object usually seen as the brightest in Earth's night sky other than the Moon. In the end, it became bright enough to be seen during the day with an estimated visual magnitude of minus 7.5. The news would have spread like wildfire over the globe. Records from China, Japan, Iraq, Egypt, Europe, and maybe even North America all bear witness to the occurrence. White Tanks Regional Park in Arizona is home to ancient rock art that some scientists believe may foretell the arrival of this new star. On July 4, 1054 AD, a new star emerged in the constellation Taurus the Bull, dazzling the entire planet with a display of celestial pyrotechnics. Over a period of two years, the supernova, which was initially brighter than the moon, gradually disappeared. Probably a lot of ancient civilizations noticed the dazzling object. Chaco Canyon National Park and the neighboring area of New Mexico contain petroglyphs that are among the most intriguing potential recordings. However, other academics have cast doubt on the claim that this rock art actually represents the supernova. The supernova remnant, now known as the Crab Nebula, is frequently observed by amateur astronomers. The explosion of a single massive star, known as a Type II supernova, is what scientists believe led to its formation. Supernova 3C58 is believed to have been seen by astronomers in China and Japan in 1181 AD. Just like in other stories of the past, this event is listed as a guest star. Incredible new details about the remnants of this star's explosion have been revealed by modern imaging of the supernova, such as the image above acquired by NASA's orbiting Chandra X-ray Observatory. The fast-spinning neutron star, known as a pulsar, at the center of this star is encircled by a dense ring. Even now, the extremely magnetic dead star's X-ray jets reach for billions of miles and twist and turn around the pulsar. In 1572 AD, Sen 1572 gloriously gleamed in the sky as a new star in the constellation Cassiopeia. Before the invention of the telescope, the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe took note as he embarked on his monumental project to chart and measure the heavens. Based on his results, Brahe determined that the new star was located beyond the moon. During a time when Nicholas Copernicus's views that Earth wasn't the center of the cosmos and that the world changed were rocking popular awareness, NASA claims this discovery was crucial. Johannes Kepler, an astronomer and mathematician, is honored by having his name attached to the 1604 supernova. For over a year after the new star first became visible in Earth's night sky, he monitored it closely. Daytime visibility allowed the supernova to be spotted around the world, including China. Astronomers continue to examine this remarkable supernova remnant even now, Therefore, another star time bomb could go off before Betelgeuse does, lighting up the sky here on Earth, even though the latter could take hundreds of thousands of years. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.